So guys, it seems like we've had a ton of GPU releases over the last several months. And after reviewing pretty much all of them, I think it's time that we look back and see which ones are actually worth it and which ones are not. So we'll be looking at everything from the budget GPUs up to the enthusiast ones and uh, you know what you can expect to pay for each. And I've got to say, it's a great time to be buying a new GPU if you are in the market for one, because there are a lot of great options available. So before we get started on the specific GPUs that I recommend to you guys at this point, I'd like to start with some general advice when it comes to specific models. My first tip here is to generally stay away from those premium models. I'm referring to the models that sometimes come in at a $50 premium or more, which do a great job of looking more appealing and faster than the base models. But the reality is that most of the time you should just save your money and get the base models. So the premium cards like the Asus Strix, the MSI Gaming X, and the EVGA Ultra Gaming XC do come with beefier coolers, which means that they will Will run a bit cooler and quieter. They do come with a slightly higher power limit also, which means that you might be able to overclock them a bit more. And of course, they do come with a factory overclock out of the box. The catch is that the price of these cards most of the time is starting to creep up to a new price bracket where you could actually just invest a few more bucks and get a faster GPU. Most of the time, especially when we're talking about budget and mainstream GPUs, you are going to be better off with the base models, which do feature an adequate cooler with acceptable noise levels and thermals. That extra money saved could go towards faster RAM, maybe some more storage, or even a game or two. Okay, now let's get started and let's kick it off with what I think is the best value GPU right now for 1080p gaming, and that's AMD's RX 570. It's kind of hard to believe that this GPU is the best on this list, seeing as it's based off of the RX 470, which released almost three years ago, but seeing as prices are so aggressive, it really just makes it an insane deal. At the moment, you can find plenty of four gigabyte models going for around $129 to $139 US, with the eight gigabyte models for around a $10 premium. If you can find an 8 gigabyte model for under 150 that would be my personal pick since the extra video memory will allow you to run higher resolution textures in game without a performance hit the 4 gigabyte models are absolutely fine though if you're not playing with ultra textures enabled overall this gpu can run modern titles at 1080p high settings no problem at all so for those looking to game at 1080p 60 fps this is the card. It's also the card if you're just looking for the cheapest discrete graphics card that you can get your hands on right now. I know technically it's not the cheapest GPU out there, but come on, would you rather a $99 GT 1030, a $105 RX 560, or spend the extra few bucks on a $129 RX 570? The $20 premium that you pay for the four gigabyte RX 570 is absolutely worth it in my opinion, over something like an RX 560. For those wanting to game at higher frame rates at 1080, resolution though or maybe even dabble with 1440p my next pick would be the gtx 1660 you can currently pick up one of the base models for around 219 dollars which feature a dual fan cooler and one of the great things here is that there is a ton of stock available at the base msrp that is always great to see performance for the 1660 comes in at around 10 to 15 percent faster than the 8 gigabyte rx 580 making it plenty capable at 1080p i'd also consider this as an entry level 1440 40p gaming GPU 2, where if you don't mind dropping some graphic settings to around medium, 60 FPS should be no problem at all. The 1660 is also the cheapest Nvidia GPU to feature the new Turing NVENC encoder for streaming, which has improved video quality and compression smoothing. Other notes are the 6GB of video memory, which I think is the sweet spot for 1080p gaming, the lower power consumption, and the fact that 95% of GTX 1660s available will have no problem with cooling or noise levels. And yes, for those wondering, the RX 580 is still a great choice too, but only if you can find one under $190, which there are only a couple models available at that price. Anything more than that, and you should honestly just get the GTX 1660. The RX 590 is an okay choice too now at $229, whereas it launched at $279, but the 1660 is still a bit faster in most titles for $10 less. It consumes less power and also runs cooler and quieter. For those with a slightly higher budget though, the new 1660 Ti can get you around GTX 10 to 1070 Ti performance for just $279. Again, this is a fresh release from Nvidia, so there are plenty of models available at the base MSRP, and those premium models that are coming in at around $300, you should definitely avoid those. They're not horrible, but just to reiterate my point in the intro, for a power efficient GPU like the 1660 Ti, those massive coolers really are not needed. 
I won't talk much about the 1660 Ti because it's just basically 15 to 20% faster than the vanilla 1660 for a 27% increase in price. And I know a few of you would rather get the Vega 56 for an additional $20, although it is roughly the same performance as the 1660 Ti, but it does offer a lot more potential for overclocking. So if you don't care about power consumption, thermals or noise levels, you can technically squeeze more FPS out of a Vega 56 by flashing a Vega 64 V BIOS and then doing some power limit mods. This is a minority of you though, so most of you honestly would just be better suited to the 1660 Ti. Now we're going to skip through the RTX 2060, 2070 and 2080 as these cards are just generally okay, but the RTX 2060 does deserve the most honorable mention out of the three as it does offer the best value. Now my next choice might be a bit odd to some of you seeing as it did have a bit of a rocky launch and it's AMD's Radeon 7. Priced at $699, we are looking at an enthusiast level GPU you here which is capable of gaming at 4k however seeing as it offers about equal performance in gaming to the rtx 2080 i can't recommend it just for gaming in fact if you are just gaming the rtx 2080 is the better choice at this price but what makes the radeon 7 interesting is the 16 gigabytes of hbm2 memory with a peak bandwidth of one terabyte per second and its excellent performance when running opencl programs in blender we're seeing render times that are on par with the significantly more expensive 2080 ti making it a great enthusiast choice for this application. This really does make the Radeon 7 an excellent workstation GPU option for OpenCL programs without costing an arm and a leg, performance that can't be leveraged from a similarly priced RTX 2080. Remember, the Radeon 7 is derived from the Radeon Instinct MI50 accelerator, so it is a workstation GPU that's just been repurposed into a gaming graphics card package. And just a reminder that the performance for the Radeon 7 is going to be application specific, so if what you're using is running on Nvidia's CUDA programming language instead, you are better off honestly with an RTX 2080 in that instance. And the last GPU on this list is the RTX 2080 Ti. Not because it's good value, because it really isn't, but because it simply is the best of the best. In terms of the ultimate no compromise desktop graphics card, this is it. Whether you want to game at 240fps plus at 1080p, 150fps plus at 1440p, or 60fps at 4k with ultra settings enabled, the 2080 Ti can make that happen. At this price bracket, I'd say that you're more than welcome to spend a bit more on a premium card like a hybrid card or one with a three slot cooler if you have the room for it seeing as the 2080 ti is very power hungry and does need the appropriate amount of cooling having said that i'm personally running the two slot founders edition card in my gaming rig and thermals and noise levels have been absolutely fine so if you are in the market for a new gpu uh, definitely consider these options that we've looked at today it really seems that the budget and the mainstream market really thriving with you know, the Radeon RX 570 and the RX 580 pretty much cheaper than ever. And the new GTX 1660 and the 1660 Ti actually provide some pretty great value as well. I really would love to see more competition in that $400 to $500 range because the people who already have the RX 580 or maybe even the GTX 1060 don't really have much, uh, you know, options available to them. As we said, the RTX 2060 and the 2070 only provide sort of average value, certainly not bad, but you know, it's nothing compared to the RX 570 and RX 580. So it really would be nice to see, you know, AMD come to the table and compete in that price bracket. So hopefully we can see that, uh, you know, happen in the second half of this year. So if you're interested in any of the GPUs that we've discussed today, you can check those linked in the description down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.